Hello, 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 friends. Today, I wanna to talk to you about how do you increase the pressure on your well system, right? Is it easy? Is it hard? I have faith that you can do it. Let's get into it. So, pressure, right? On a well system, you're gonna have a pump and a pressure tank. Sometimes the pressure tank will be in the well. Sometimes it'll be in the house. Sometimes it'll be in a crawl space. It'll depend on how the house is set up. Some houses are a little bit different than others, right? So with a conventional setup, you're gonna have the pump in the well that shoots the water to the house. There's gonna be a pressure tank, which is that big blue thing over here, right? Then from there, the water will be pushed throughout the rest of the home. Now, with most conventional systems, especially nowadays, you're gonna see that the pressure will vary between 40 PSI and 60 PSI. A little while ago, and even on some modern systems, you'll see 50, or 30 and 50 or 20 and 40. So why do they always separate it by 20 PSI? Well, good question. When they're running the pump, the switch is what's gonna turn the pump on and turn the pump off, right? Well, the uh, auxiliary function of a pressure, a pressure tank is actually to give the pump cool time, a cool time, right? The water is the coolant for the pump, so the longer the pump runs, the more efficiently it'll run. What burns the pump up is the on-off cycle. So if you can get that 20-point swing to last about a minute, that gives ample time for that water to cool the well pump, right? So you want to see a 20-point swing. Every now and again, people will adjust it. Don't do that. It's not worth it, right? I generally am of the mindset, stick with the factory set uh, device. You'll basically stay within warranty all the time. You'll have a better chance of getting a claim to go through. But if you start messing with it, you're going to lose most of your warranties, right? So in a minute, we're going to take a look at the actual pressure switch and how it works, right? But let's go back to the 20 point swing. So most of the older houses would be 20, 40 PSI just because jet pumps, which was the old school pump, couldn't really push the waters aggressively, right? Nowadays, with submersible pumps, we have a lot more horsepower and a lot more oomph to actually get the water into the house, right? So you can you can actually do a larger, higher pressure difference. So the most common one, like I said, is a 40, 60 switch. So what that means is when the air pressure in the pressure tank drops to 40 PSI, you hear an audible click sound, the pump engages, and the pump will compress that air until 60 PSI. And it'll constantly go down and up, down and up. It'll be very, very, very minimal change on the actual pressure in the home. Most people don't notice, right? but you'll hear an audible click sound. So we got our pressure tank, top part's air, bottom part's water, there's a bladder in between. The bladder is what's gonna actually separate those two pieces. Over time, you're gonna lose air pressure in the tank, which we've already discussed in previous videos. If you lose the air pressure and it's lost enough, what'll happen is that bladder will rupture and then you're gonna get what's called a short cycle. The broken pressure tank will then overwork the pump, which will then cause the pump to prematurely fail. And then now you gotta replace both the pump and the pressure, pressure tank. Not what we wanna do. So you aren't satisfied with 40 or 60 PSI. Can you get higher pressure is what you might be asking. The answer is yes, but you need to be careful, right? So most public water systems will generally be between 60 and 70 PSI, right? If it's any higher than that, most of the time you're gonna have a pressure reducing valve so that we don't blow fittings. The concern is that if you're increasing the pressure too much, what will happen is that fitting might pop off, right? The pressure, the pipe itself, that should be well, well able to handle any of that pressure that you have going on. But it's usually the solvent joints or the glue joints that you might run into some problems. So you got to be careful, right? The other thing is that you might have issues with your laundry. You might have issues with your faucets. You might mess up the cartridges, right? And we don't want to have that happen. So when you do this, you need to be very careful and conscious of what you're doing. But let's go ahead, pop open the cover to the pressure switch and start seeing how this whole system works. All right, so right now we're actually looking at a pressure switch and a tank T assembly, right? So we're gonna have our water line from the well comes into here. From here, the water will go into the pressure tank and then it'll go out into the rest of the house, right? This, this pressure gauge is just gonna be a visual representation of what's actually going on inside of the tank. Our hose bib is for maintenance purposes, draining, etc. And this is a pressure relief valve, right? This is designed so that if the switch stays on for whatever reason, this will discharge the water so that we don't make a bomb. Now, most of these will start to discharge at about 75 PSI. They do sell pressure relief valves that are staged a little bit higher on the pressure rating. 
Now, I generally would recommend not to try and push for higher pressure just because you do run the risk of fittings having issues, right? But let's go ahead and take a look at our pressure switch. So inside of here, we're gonna see two springs, some contact plates and electrical wires. On the cover, we'll actually see what the pressure is supposed to be. So we can see here that this is a 40, 60 switch, right? So what that means is again, 40 PSI, pump turns on, 60 PSI, pump turns off. How this will work, this spring right back here is what's gonna turn the pump on and off. And how it works is underneath, there's actually a little stem right here that the water will flow through, right? That water will flow through and it'll touch that spring. This spring is calibrated to when the pressure drops to 40 PSI, it will push these contact plates into, pla into place. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn the water off so that way we can see that it'll start to build up. Once it gets to 60 PSI, you'll hear an audible click sound and those uh, contact plates will actually disengage. This little guy right here is actually the differential switch, right? So what this will do is make it to where it's a 20 point swing. Don't mess with this. This is what we were talking about a minute ago. On most of these systems, this will be appliance grade voltage. So you need to make sure that before you touch or work or do anything on this, you have the power turned off. In our area, you're required to have a switch within eyesight of that pressure switch right here, right? If you don't have one of those, all you have to do is just go find the electric panel and then you can turn it off right over there, right? So when you're trying to increase the pressure, the part that you're gonna need to adjust is this piece right here. So basically what'll happen is when the power is off, you're gonna wanna rotate it clockwise. Every rotation clockwise will increase your pressure by about one PSI. Every rotation counterclockwise will decrease your pressure by about one PSI. We just saw a second ago that the pressure or the pressure switch disengaged. That means that those contact plates are no longer touching and the pump is no longer receiving power, meaning the pump is no longer running. That means that the pneumatic force from that compressed air is actually pushing the water through the rest of the home. So once you turn off the power, you rotate this, you're gonna wanna rotate it you know, a couple times to make sure that you get the pressure you want, and then you're gonna turn the pump back on, right? So you're gonna turn the power on and you're gonna watch the pressure gauge to see how much it fills up. And the reason why is you wanna make sure that you watch it so that way if you over pressurized it, and this starts to drip, you can actually turn the power off and not have any issues. It won't just burst and just start shooting water all over the ground, but it will slow drip until eventually the pressure gets high enough that it will actually engage completely and let the water out of the tank until it gets below whatever its opening point is. For example, 75 PSI. Let's say that you pump this up to 80 PSI, the pressure relief valve goes off, now, it just will drip, 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 drip until you get to uh, 75 PSI and then it will stop, right? Until the pump turns back on and then it'll do it again. It'll constantly drip a little bit. If you have water sitting around your basement, you run the risk of mold and all sorts of other contaminants getting in there. With systems like this, it's very important to make sure that you're conscious of all the decisions you make, right? It is your home. You can do whatever you want in your house. However, there are reasons that people will set things the way that they set them, right? So the standard conventional practice is 40 or 60 PSI. It's not because we don't want you to have good pressure. It's because we don't want you to hurt things in your home that you may not think about. There are systems, like if you're not content with a 40 or 60 PSI switch, you can get what's called a constant pressure system, which will maintain 60, 70, 75 PSI, whatever the pressure is you want, it will maintain it by using the pump. So it will reverse the order of operations. For this type of system, the pump is gonna get the water to the house and the tank is what pressurizes it, right? Or basically pushes the water through the house. The pump technically pressurizes it, but once it gets into the house, it's all pneumatic, right? It's not mechanical. With a constant pressure system, the pump is what's actually gonna supply pressure to the home. So the more water you call for, the more aggressively the pump will spin and the more water will discharge until it reaches whatever its output maximum is, whether it be 10 gallons a minute, 14, eight, seven, whatever. But you gotta be careful, right? Those systems, at least in our area, constant pressure systems, basically the same cost, maybe a little bit more uh, than putting in a traditional, uh, a traditional uh, system, right? So if it's in your budget, and if that's something you really care about, I would strongly recommend, rather than messing with that switch, 
go ahead, get a constant pressure system, and then you don't have to worry about it, right? It'll have a computer so you can program it to do whatever you want. And most of them will actually come with safety features. So that way, like if, for example, your pump's running dry, it'll turn, or it'll turn itself off and keep you from burning up the pump and it'll give the well time to recover. Pretty cool technology. Definitely something you should consider looking into, right? I hope that this was helpful, right? Teaching you a little bit about how well systems work, how pressure switches work, how the pressure tank works. If you enjoyed this kind of content, hit that like button and subscribe. I always have content posted every single day on the world of well and septic. Let's learn and grow together, guys. If you have any areas of conversation or topic you want me to cover, leave a comment below. I try to get to all of them as fast as I can. Till next time, guys.